Hey, so this video will be on photosynthesis and cellular respiration. These are topics that you would have had or did have, should have had, in uh, the first biology uh, course, Biology 103. Um, so I just want to hit some highlights just so since we've been talking about animals and breathing and cardiovascular system and now we're talking about plants, uh, we want to make sure that we're tying back to things that we've learned in previous semesters, just kind of making sure everything comes together and makes sense and we're not just, you know, learning and dumping. We know that it's all related. So this one is just a brief overview of uh, the information that you should have done in 103 for cellular respiration and photosynthesis. So this is just the need to know and remind you of some basic things about it. So I'm going to go to the PowerPoint. Okay. All right, so cellular respiration and photosynthesis. So these are two important chemical reactions that go on in... Um, animals uh, and plants for cellular respiration and photosynthesis for the plant. And it's all about energy. So how do we uh, make something called ATP uh, that's required for all living things to, um, to be able to function? Uh, and on Earth, living things need oxygen in order for cellular respiration to occur. So these things are closely related. Uh, you, you can't have one without the other. We need our plants to uh, use photosynthesis to make our oxygen so that our animals can use the cellular respiration uh, to function. And again, plants use cellular respiration too. I think that's something that people forget. They think plants only use photosynthesis, but at night when the sun's not out, uh, plants are living creatures as well and they use ATP just like animals do. So we have to have both of these processes going on. So the first thing just to review is cellular respiration. And this is um, in the presence of oxygen. Let me get my pen. In the um, presence of oxygen uh, and the presence of a sugar, particularly glucose, uh, you can put these two together and run them through a series of chemical events uh, and you will make ATP. Uh, you'll also give off a byproduct called carbon dioxide. So every time uh, we breathe, we're breathing in oxygen, we're breathing out CO2. That's regular respiration. That's called mechanical respiration. When we breathe in and breathe out, breathing in O2 and then breathing out CO2, that's not cellular respiration. That's mechanical respiration. Uh, cellular respiration is taking that oxygen, taking it into our bodies and then down into our lungs and eventually into our cells to our mitochondria where it joins with sugars that we've gotten from our diet. Uh, that's where cellular respiration takes place. So deep inside of our bodies, within our cells, and the mitochondria of our cells, our bodies are taking oxygen. So here's oxygen plus sugar, and they are creating ATP, and with the byproduct being CO2 and water. So that CO2 is what we breathe off, uh, and the water also, we breathe off water. If you think about when you breathe and your breath is kind of moist, uh, that's water, but it's also water that you may uh, release from your body as uh, sweat or urine. So this is something that we definitely do every day. Every time we breathe, we breathe in oxygen. The oxygen goes to our cells, joins with sugar and the mitochondria, and forms ATP, carbon dioxide, and water. So the reason we use glucose is a high energy molecule. As you break it down, uh, every time you break down a chemical, you think back to what you learned. Uh, chemicals are connected by bonds, and bonds are just ways to store energy. So every time you break a bond, you release energy. So what you're doing with cellular respiration is basically moving bonds around, uh, transporting electrons from one bond to another, uh, and storing and releasing energy. So it's just basically a movement uh, of energy uh, through bond formation and uh, breaking down bonds. And so, long story short, what we're doing is we're making ATP. And it's pretty efficient. So cellular respiration is, uh, there's one of basically three ways to make ATP. We won't go into a lot of detail. Uh, there's two ways that are what we consider anaerobic uh, in without oxygen present. Um, and so you can use glucose to make ATPs, but you don't make very many. It's not a real efficient process, and it doesn't last very long. 
Uh, the most efficient way to make ATP is through cellular respiration, where you can actually take one glucose molecule and make between 36 and 38 ATPs. So this is what our bodies want to do most of the time, because it's the most efficient way to do it. Okay. So there's several phases of cellular respiration. Okay, again, this is the aerobic, uh, most efficient way of making ATP. Uh, the first step is glycolysis, and that occurs in the cytoplasm. Then the next three steps, uh, the preparatory reaction, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain are all in the mitochondria. So I want you to know the, the four phases and where they occur. I don't want you to get bogged down into the actual steps. You should have done that in 103, and I'm not going to rehash that out and make you uh, do that again. Uh, but again, in both animal, this is an animal cell, and plant cell, they both use cellular respiration. They both have mitochondria, uh, and in the presence of sugar and oxygen, they will both undergo cellular respiration to make ATP. And so that first step, uh, that glycolysis, occurs in the cytoplasm. Okay? And what glycolysis does, lysis means to cut, cut glucose, that turns glucose into pyruvate. And that actually does give you some ATP. So that's one of those anaerobic steps I was talking about, but not much. You only get two ATPs by cutting down glucose into pyruvate. Now, if pyruvate's in, <clears throat> if oxygen's present, when you have pyruvate present, then that pyruvate will then enter into the mitochondria, uh, and it will go through a series of uh, three reactions, this preparatory reaction, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain. So if you've Learn this in 103. If you want to go back and go over all the steps, you're more than welcome to. I'm not going to make you do that for me. Uh, long story short, once um, the glucose or the pyruvate, sorry, goes through uh, these three um, steps, you get a net ATP. Okay, so you're getting ATPs made all along the way uh, as this uh, as these chemical reactions move through the mitochondria. So. The number of mitochondria you get uh, is you get two from glycolysis and you get two from the citric acid cycle. So again, not the most efficient way, not the most, you know, not the, the way you get most of your ATP. Where you get most of your ATP is through the electron transport chain. Okay, this is this is where the real efficiency and beauty of cellular respiration kind of shows off. This is where you get uh, all that ATP. So what I want you to to take home, your take home message is again oxygen plus sugar plus glucose. Okay, hard to write. <laughs> it's going to first occur in the cytoplasm. Okay, your glucose is going to be broken down to pyruvate, give you off some ATPs. That pyruvate will then enter into the citric acid cycle, give you off two more ATPs. And then the byproducts that are coming off of these two processes. That's going to help run the electron transport chain. And that's, again, that's your moneymaker here. The electron transport chain, as these electrons are transported uh, from one chain to the next, each time that happens, again, bonds are going to be made and, break, made and, and broken, um, you're going to get ATPs. And so at each step, you're going to get more and more ATPs till finally you get 32 to 34 ATPs. You add these and these together, then you get about 36 to 38 ATPs. So that's cellular respiration in a nutshell. Again, don't go back and learn all the steps unless you just want to. I just want you to know what it is, where it is, uh, cytoplasm versus mitochondria, and generally what goes on in each of the four phases. Okay? So that's how we make ATP. Well, to do that, to do that aerobic respiration, that aerobic cellular respiration, you have to have oxygen. So where do we get oxygen? Photosynthesis. And so photosynthesis... Uh, photo meaning light, synthesis means to make. You're taking solar energy and turning it into chemical energy. So you're converting solar light into chemical sugar. Okay, anything that can do that uh, are called autotrophs. So photosynthesizers are autotrophs. So plants do this, uh, algae do this. So there are several different things that can photosynthesize. So we've talked about algae and now we're talking about plants. And also those blue-green algae, those cyanobacteria. Uh, these are some of the major oxygen producers in our oceans, are, are the cyanobacteria. Uh, things that eat the stuff made by autotrophs are called heterotrophs. So heterotrophs feed on autotrophs. All right, so the way you can photosynthesize, or the way these organisms do that, is they have to have a special pigment called chlorophyll. 
okay? And this chlorophyll reacts to the light and it is able to convert that solar energy into the energy that we need to drive this process called photosynthesis. So chlorophyll is kind of an important um, structure here, it's an important chemical. So photosynthesis in plants is going to occur in the leaves. Uh, so there's some, some plants, there's other parts that are photosynthetic, but generally you know, the leaves are kind of the big thing. That's why you see lots of photosynthesis going on in the, in the uh, spring and summer. You don't see a whole lot here in the wintertime because the leaves are off the trees. Luckily for us, the Amazon is uh, at the equator, so it doesn't have summer and winter, so it photosynthesizes all year round. That's one of the reasons it's so important. You don't have seasonal changes uh, in the amount of photosynthesis and oxygen production going on uh, in the Amazon like you do here. So um, for cellular respiration, you needed glucose plus um, oxygen. What you need for photosynthesis is water and CO2. So these are the two things that you need in order to make the oxygen. So where does the water come from? Well, the water's coming from the ground. So it's going to be taken up by the roots and transported uh, up into the veins all the way out to the leaves. So is that xylem or phloem? Which one's moving the water? Phloem's for food, right? So xylem is for water. All right, so where does the carbon dioxide come from? That comes from the air, all right? And that's going to enter into the leaves through a little opening called a stomata, which is uh, like a little mouth. So that's where the carbon dioxide can enter into the leaves, okay? So the carbon dioxide from the air, the water from the soil, is gonna diffuse and enter into what's called a chloroplast. So this is an organelle inside the cell, like you have mitochondria uh, that make the ATP, the chloroplasts are for photosynthesis, okay? So light energy, all right, is going to cause photosynthesis to occur because chlorophyll will absorb that energy and help start the process of converting carbon dioxide and water into oxygen in the chloroplast. So you're gonna have the carbon dioxide uh, coming in from the air, it's gonna be coming in, so here's one of those stomata, so we have carbon dioxide entering in from the air. Uh, water, here's some of the vessels of the, of the leaf, so water's gonna be transported from the roots all the way to the leaf. And in this section of the leaf, this is where you have lots and lots of chloroplasts. Okay, so chloroplasts are where the actual photosynthesis take place. So your chemical reaction is carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of solar energy equals glucose plus oxygen. Okay, that's a pretty efficient process. So these are, uh, this is the way that works. So oxygen is given off um, as a byproduct when sugar is made from carbon dioxide and water. All right, so again, you have to have energy to do that, and we use the energy of the sun to do it. So again, it's two, uh, two things going on. Photo means you're using sun energy. Synthesis means you're making in the carbohydrate. And whereas cellular respiration had four different types of processes that uh, are going on, you only have two, um, two main ways of photos uh, making um, carbohydrates in plants. Uh, light reactions and Calvin reactions. So the light reactions are the things that happen in the daytime with light, and there is a way to make it that doesn't require light called the Calvin reaction. Again, I'm not going to make you go and compare and contrast the two different types, but just remember that there are two reactions that allow you to make um, these carbohydrates. So in a plant cell, again, not animal cells, but plant cells, there's your mitochondria, that's for the cellular respiration, and then here's your chloroplast. So this is the chloroplast needed for photosynthesis. So you have water enters into the chloroplast. You have CO2 from the air entering into the chloroplast. A series of reactions that hopefully you remember from 103. Again, I'm not going to make you go in and, and go through all the steps. Uh, but you go through those light reactions with a byproduct of oxygen and sugar or glucose. Okay, so that's uh, the take-home message. So comparing and contrasting them, both animals and plants carry out cellular respiration. Okay? Plants have to use cellular respiration. They need ATP too. They need energy to drive processes. Okay? And in both plants and animals, that occurs in the mitochondria. They both use the breakdown of glucose to make ATP. Photosynthesis. Plants only. Animals do not do this. It occurs in the chloroplast. 
it makes the glucose and it requires solar energy. So photos, um, cellular respiration makes energy, photosynthesis uses energy. Okay, cellular respiration breaks down glucose, photosynthesis makes glucose. Okay, so here's the reaction and it's reversible. You can see photosynthesis, you're taking energy plus carbon dioxide and water, making sugar and oxygen. Cellular respiration, you take that oxygen and sugar, turn it back the other way, turn it into water, CO2 and energy. All right, so it's a reversible reaction. So just one more slide, just to remind you uh, of where this is occurring. Here are your chloroplasts and the plants, uh, mitochondria, plants and animals, with a side-by-side -side comparison of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. All right, so that was the uh, easy photosynthesis, cellular respiration, kind of take-home points of things I want you to be able to remember uh, from 103 as you're thinking about plants, uh, and then kind of making those ties back to what we covered in respiration and breathing uh, in the animals. And that's it. So appreciate your time. That's uh, your that's your video lecture. And good luck.